shares of Tommy Hilfiger and Calvin Klein parent company PVH are now lower. They were higher after reporting earnings just moments ago, beating the street, raising its full year guidance. And joining us now in a CNBC exclusive to discuss these results is Manny Chirico, PVH CEO. Welcome. Nice Thank to you, see sir. you. Nice so what's you. working for you? Looks like, like Calvin Klein especially strong. Yes, I think Calvin Klein and the Tommy Hilfiger business are two big brands is really what driving our growth both from a, dom a domestic North America base and continued growth internationally, driven by Europe and China. Is there something to read into the price points there that are working, if, if the, the growth there is 15 percent or so, but yes. uh, if your heritage brands is, is low, only 3 percent? Well, I think that, y y yes, I think the, what I would describe as premium brands, I'm not talking luxury, but premium brands, are, it's a good place to be, especially when you think about Asia as a market. Those price points are really strong for us there, and the growth really works for us at, that, at those price points. So I would read into that. The challenge with the heritage businesses, which had a good quarter, the challenges with, with those businesses are they're solely North America based for the most part, and you just don't have, they've been around for 100 years, they just don't have necessarily the growth, constant uh, earnings and that you can count on from a cash flow. But you're pushing some of those into Europe, though, now. We just started to push our IZOD brand into Europe and have gotten a good reception. But again, we're talking about a really small base at this point. But we're uh, enthusiastic about it. It's interesting you point to, to Europe and Asia as the real growth engines here. We've been fixated on what the U.S. consumer is sure. doing and how it's acting. Um, where is the kind of growth coming from in those areas, meaning... Um, from just other other brands, non-brands, is it just a kind of a play on expanding middle class? Well, I think um, you have to. If you think about the Tommy Hilfiger brand, we we are really benefiting from the marketing initiatives and the resurgence of that brand over the last few years, and it just continues to grow very strong. On the Calvin Klein side of the business, the Calvin Klein brand is much bigger than Tommy Hilfiger in just about every region except Europe, and there's just open to fill space for us in Europe. It's uh, and we've been growing the Calvin brand about, for the last three years, about 25% in Europe. So there's a lot of white space that there's to fill. And even today, we see a billion dollar sales opportunity for us over the next three to four years. Manny, I've been doing a lot of work on influencers, models, and celebrities that back a product and that create this whole halo effect over the product. You're seeing it at Adidas. I've talked about Kanye West at Nike with Virgil Abloh. Wasn't it Gigi Hadid for you at Tommy Hilfiger? And, and now that she's no longer with you, is that a risk to this resurgence you've seen in the brand? Well, it's, it's, a, great, it's a great question. The, uh, the use of influences, I would argue, was started by Calvin, Calvin Klein, when you think about it as you go back from uh, Marky Mark and some of the, those iconic... Brooke Shields. Uh, Brooke Shields, exactly. And I think uh, Tommy really captured it with Gigi on two levels. The Tommy brand is, has been very much more skewed to men's than women's, and I think Gigi just gave us a license to grow that women's component the last three years very strongly. I think we will have an announcement in the next month or two, which I, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but I think there'll be another female spokesmodel for us that we think will really carry us through the day. Well, you have the Kardashians in the underwear. On the Calvin, Calvin Klein, Klein side of the thing, that's, that's been a real win. You know, you talk about uh, iconic uh, launches. Justin Bieber, two years ago, we followed that with the Kardashians about six months ago. The new launch in underwear and jeans uh, this, this season, I, we're really seeing momentum in the business. And you have to change your marketing approach. It really was television and print if you go back 10 years, and today it's all digital, social media, and maybe 20% of our media spend is on the digital side, uh, is on the uh, traditional side. A slightly boring question to round it off, but interesting <laughs> nonetheless, uh, particularly for our viewers. We'll talk about the currency impact. Is that weighed on the results a little bit uh, relative? It to clearly it? Was, a, it was a it was a real headwind if you go back two years with the strengthening dollar. This year it's leveled off. The challenge we faced is when we opened the year, just as an example, the, the euro was 124, today it's 116. On a year-to-year -year basis, it's about a flat impact. But when we started the year, we projected there would be about a 35 cent benefit, and it's only turning out to be about a seven cent benefit. So we've been able to raise, continue to raise our earnings despite those currency hits in the first two quarters. Very quickly, how much of your product is produced in China, and is that at risk of uh, escalation in this trade fight? About $400 million of product is produced in China for the U.S. market. 
probably another 600 out for our businesses outside of, of U.S., but if you're focused on tariffs, that might be an impact if it gets that far. It's, relatively speaking, not, a, not that big a component for us from a tariff point of view. Of course, we don't think that's the way to approach the trade negotiation as the only lever and the only weapon. Though you're laying out the numbers. A lot of retailers did not do that this quarter. Manny, we tried you. Thank you. <laughs> thank Manny you. Trico, PVH, CEO. I want to know who the next influence is going to be. I know. That was quite a tease. Oh, anyway. We'll find out in a month. Is that what you said? Um, uh, exclusively first, I hope. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, uh, Manny.